its image carefully maintained. The organization colossal, the fervor relentless, the secret complete. En ce moment, il y a des enfants qui sont en danger. C'est la parfaite place pour un pédophile pour se cacher. La première chose qui est sortie de sa bouche, c'est « Maman, il a touché mon pénis. » J'ai dit « Quoi? Qui a touché ton pénis? » Semaine après semaine, dans tous les cours de piano, il me demandait aussi euh, de le toucher. Within the Jehovah's Witnesses organization, as elsewhere, pedophilia is a sin. A sin that's mainly dealt with internally, with laws as old as time. Tout est dans la Bible. Tout est dans les instructions. Tout est là. Il barre la porte de la salle du royaume, puis il dit une dernière question. Est-ce que tu as aimé ça? There are 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses in the world, 115,000 in Canada. They knock politely at your door, they don't believe in celebrating holidays, and they refuse blood transfusions. For them, the end of the world is near. Let's stay calm and lean on Jehovah. At some point, we can expect the final attack on God's people. And Satan is everywhere. Caleb, who likes magic? Jehovah or Satan? Satan. Do you really want to play with something that Jehovah hates? Behind not only these videos, but also each magazine left at your door, is a publishing empire. The Watchtower Society in Brooklyn, New York. This is where the Jehovah's Witnesses crafted their policies on pedophilia. J'aimais ça, je me pratiquais à la maison, on avait un piano à la maison. C'était quelque chose que j'aimais. C'est une passion, vraiment. C'était mon professeur de piano. Un homme très talentueux. C'est un homme connu dans notre religion. C'est un ancien, euh, vraiment euh, père de famille. Un exemple à suivre. What was he doing? Ben, en fait, euh, Semaine après semaine, dans tous les cours de piano que j'avais avec cet homme-là, euh, il se masturbait devant moi. Puis il me demandait aussi euh, de le toucher. You would get out of your piano lesson, and your dad was there waiting. J'étais pas capable de le regarder dans les yeux. Mélanie was 10 years old. Her weekly nightmare lasted five years. In her teens, she quits piano and starts dating a boy which is very much frowned upon by Jehovah's Witnesses. Melanie is reported. She's summoned to a judicial committee, the church's internal court. Her punishment, a public rebuke in front of the faithful. Who was behind the punishment? C'était mon professeur de piano, et uh, c'était mon abuseur. So it was your abuser who was judging you for your behavior with boys. Oui, exactement. C'est pathétique. Je le revois encore, là, qui était à ma gauche, puis euh, avec ses yeux accusateurs. Je le revois encore, puis oui, à ce moment-là, j'aurais voulu le crier. What stopped you? Oublie ça. Ce que j'aurais dit, là, mon témoignage, là, aurait été balayé du revers de la main. Ça, c'est clair. That's because her teacher is a pillar in their community, an elder. It's the first step in the hierarchy of power of the Jehovah's Witnesses. At the top of the ladder is the governing body in New York, which sets all of the rules that dictate how Jehovah's Witnesses live. Ça peut être l'homosexualité, ça peut être l'adultère, ça peut être le vol, ça peut être la fraude, ça peut être le mensonge. It's a long list of sins that can lead to excommunication. Still, Benoît Poirier knows it by heart. He's a convert who worked his way up and became an elder. Les anciens ont comme rôle d'être, on peut dire, en avant, pour guider. C'est « suivez-nous, suivez-moi ». Donc, ils se doivent être des exemples. C'est un exemple. Set an example and discipline the faithful, 
sometimes even for the sexual abuse of a child. Once, Benoit Poirier had to interrogate young girls who accused their own father of abuse. What type of questions did you have to ask? What happened? What did he do? We have to have some details. At what repetition? At what frequency? Is there a penetration? Is there a relationship? Et relation? Etc. In Quebec, a detective has to spend 160 hours in specialized training before he can interrogate a victim of sexual abuse. Do you think it's normal that someone like you, without any training, asks children such private questions? Dans une certaine manière, moi je crois qu'on est on était formé pour le faire. Les témoins de Jéhovah font beaucoup beaucoup d'études. Biblical studies. Ils sont basés oui sur des principes bibliques. But that was his previous life. Benoît Poirier is no longer an elder. He's not even a Jehovah's Witness anymore. Je pense à tout démoli. Tout court. Tout démoli. Notre vie s'est arrêtée, notre monde s'est arrêté. Benoît is Melanie's father. He was the one waiting for his daughter's lesson to end while her piano teacher was allegedly assaulting her in the next room. J'aurais même pas pu imaginer dans le pire de mes cauchemars qu'une chose pareille pouvait se passer. C'est impossible. Ça. ça prend du culot pour faire ça à un enfant alors que tu sais que son père est juste l'autre bord d'une porte, là. juste à côté, dans le salon à côté. Là. Ça prend du culot, sérieusement du culot. Puis il n'aurait pas fallu que je le voie sur place. Ça n'aurait pas été beau, je pense. Mélanie keeps her secret for nearly 20 years, until she meets a second alleged victim, a meeting that convinces both women to come forward. The piano teacher is called before two judicial committees. Mélanie arrives at hers with her father and her husband. On est arrêté sur le bord du chemin avant d'arriver. Puis euh, j'ai dit à mon mari à ce moment-là, euh, je serai jamais capable, je serai jamais capable de ramener moi à la maison. C'est impossible, je, je vais mourir. Je pensais que ça serait difficile, mais ça n'a pas été difficile. Ça a été la catastrophe, vraiment. A catastrophe, because Mélanie is forced to tell all in front of her alleged abuser. It's a core rule among Jehovah's Witnesses, drawn from an interpretation of Bible verse. Si je n'avais pas accepté de le confronter, mon témoignage ne valait plus rien. Alors, euh, évidemment, j'étais seule comme femme, hein? Oui, bien sûr. Assise sur ma petite chaise et euh, j'avais euh, mon abuseur euh, très proche de moi à la table. Il venait me poser les questions. Euh, il me demandait, euh, voyons donc, euh, tu te trompes, c'est pas avec moi que ça s'est passé, c'est impossible, tes souvenirs, euh, tes souvenirs sont faux, euh, pourquoi que tu veux me faire ça? Alors, j'étais revictimisée par cet homme-là ce soir-là. Tout de suite après le comité, je me suis rendue à la salle de bain et euh, je me sentais vraiment pas bien, gros maux de tête, étourdissement, j'ai même perdu connaissance. Quand j'ai vu ma fille à terre, c'était comme s'il venait de la frapper, puis c'était lui qui le faisait écraser à terre. Je suis venu fou, j'ai perdu les pédales. On m'a sorti de la salle, je frappais dans les murs. Je peux pas croire, je peux pas croire qu'ils peuvent pas trouver une façon de respecter les principes bibliques et en même temps faire ça avec beaucoup plus d'amour et de compassion envers la victime, qui est dans un traumatisme. After the testimony of the two victims, the piano teacher is expelled from the Jehovah's Witnesses. He then appeals the decision. Melanie has to repeat the process two more times before the excommunication is upheld. But it doesn't last long. On the road to Abitibi, a fishing trip that goes terribly wrong. C'est une longue route pour se rendre au lac, pour aller pêcher. Donc, il y a un conducteur qui voit absolument pas ce qui se passe derrière son bas. Il y a deux personnes qui somnolent. Et lui, il est assis à côté de mon fils et il masturbe tout le long sur le chemin. Puis comme si c'était pas assez, dans la chaloupe aussi. A first bonding trip for a father and son. They're joined by three friends, all Jehovah's Witnesses. The boy's mother will never forget the day they got back. J'étais seule. Mon fils est entré dans la cuisine et la première chose qui est sortie de sa bouche, c'est 
Maman, il a touché mon pénis. Le sang m'est tombé dans les jambes. J'ai dit quoi? Qui a touché ton pénis? Le monsieur. Quel monsieur? Le monsieur qui était avec vous dans la voiture? Oui. The man in question is an elder from another congregation. Ben, j'ai dit, euh, là, ça restera pas comme ça. Mon mari a appelé un ancien à la congrégation. L'ancien a dit qu'il n'y avait pas de problème si on voulait appeler la police, mais d'attendre. Ils vont voir à l'interne ce qu'ils peuvent faire. Did you trust the elders at that time? 100 100 Moi, les anciens, c'était des bons dieux. Mais je me suis dit, ils vont lui régler son cas. Ils vont l'exclure. But before taking care of the abuser, the elders made sure of one thing. Ça devait être tenu secret. Fallait pas en parler. D'ailleurs, c'est une des premières choses qu'on m'a dites. Qui est au courant? Garde ça comme ça, parle-en pas à personne jusqu'à ce qu'on règle l'affaire. In a case like this, reporting a sexual assault isn't mandatory in Quebec. Neither the police nor child protection services are called. The Jehovah's Witnesses will once again settle the matter internally with another judicial committee. Mon fils devait se présenter devant la personne qui l'accuse et raconter sa version des faits. Your five-year-old son had to explain what happened in front of his attacker? Exact. Je trouve ça immoral de placer un enfant de 5 ans devant son agresseur sexuel et trois anciens qu'il n'a jamais vu de sa vie. Est-ce que ces gens-là sont formés pour tenir de tels comités judiciaires? Ces gens-là sont des travailleurs autonomes avec souvent très peu de scolarité et ils s'érigent comme juges. In front of three judges, the little boy explains what he endured, but his alleged abuser contradicts him and tries to explain it all away. Avec son excitation, mon fils aurait eu une érection, puis son pénis avait dépassé de son short, puis le monsieur y avait simplement repoussé son pénis à l'intérieur de son short. Was the abuser punished? Eh bien, non. Non. Pourquoi? On m'a expliqué pourquoi. On a ouvert la Bible, on m'a montré un beau verset biblique qui dit « Pour qu'une personne soit reconnue coupable, ça prend deux témoins. » It's one of the fundamental rules for Jehovah's Witnesses. You need two witnesses or a confession to confirm an allegation of wrongdoing. Vous avez accepté ce processus-là. Pourquoi vous l'avez accepté? Ça a été la décision des anciens. Ça a été la décision de mon mari. C'était la décision de Dieu. Alors moi, je mettais comme une bonne chrétienne. The good Christian is now shaken to her core. She finally contacts the authorities. But in order to spare her son any more trauma, she gives up. Reality will catch up to her eventually. On est un groupe. On pense tout pareil. Donc ça, c'est très, très rassurant. J'étais heureuse. Par contre, c'est sûr qu'on vit avec plein de craintes. La crainte de déplaire à Jéhovah, là, est forte. Happy, perhaps, but at 14 years old, Marie-Claude Lavoie is carrying a heavy burden. She'd been sexually abused by someone close to her. She confides in her friends and instantly regrets it. Ben, les conséquences, c'était qu'il allait le dire aux dirigeants de la congrégation et que là, il allait avoir une gestion de cas là, par rapport à ça. Marie-Claude's case will be handled differently. Her abuser is not a Jehovah's Witness, so the elders have no power over him. But they do have power over Marie-Claude. At 14, she's summoned to explain herself in front of a judicial committee. Mais je ne sais pas pourquoi. Je m'attendais à recevoir du réconfort, puis, puis de l'aide, et puis... Euh... That's not what happened? Non, ce pas tout à fait ça qui est arrivé. Ce qu'ils m'ont expliqué, euh, c'est que j'aurais dû me débattre jusqu'à la mort. Parce que les contacts sexuels avant le mariage sont interdits. Les témoins m'ont accusé de ne pas être assez traumatisée de mes agressions. Donc, sous-entendait que j'étais encore plus pécheresse, là. Marie-Claude is all alone in a small room, without her mother. That's because the Jehovah's Witnesses forbid women from attending judicial committees. Waiting to hear Marie-Claude's story? Three men in their 40s. Et là, eux me disent, ouais, mais là, si tu veux le pardon de Jehovah, là... 
faut que tu nous dises tout. faut que tu nous dises tout, 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 tout. Moi, j'ai 14 ans, là. Je suis face à des hommes. Je suis pas à l'aise de parler de ça. Puis moi, dans ma tête, là, des attouchements, je trouve que c'est assez... Euh, je trouve ça assez clair. Tu sais? Non, non, eux veulent savoir quoi, comment, quand, combien de fois, puis, euh, tu sais... Et là, euh, moi, je pleure, puis je me débat devant ça, parce que là, je suis même trop mal à l'aise, là. Il me semble qu'il y avait du plaisir à me demander ces questions-là. Il me semble qu'il y avait du plaisir à m'entendre répondre. The three elders end up praying with her and absolving her of sin. She's finally about to leave the Kingdom Hall when... Il barre la porte de la salle du royaume. Les deux autres anciens sont là. Lui est là. Puis là, il me regarde et il dit une dernière question. Oui. Il me dit, euh, juste par curiosité, est-ce que tu as aimé ça? Ah, oh, ça, ça a été tellement traumatisant de me faire demander ça. Ça a été tellement humiliant. Moi, dans ma tête, ça l'a, un... ça l'a confirmé. OK, c'est un voyeur. OK, c'est un voyeur. A humiliating question, no doubt. But for the Jehovah's Witnesses, it seems essential. A version of that same question can be found in the form the elders had to complete. It's called the Child Abuse Telememo. Question 9. How many elders felt that the victim was somewhat at fault or willingly participated in the acts? We reached the elder who asked Marie-Claude Lavoie that question. The Judicial Committee, that he says, he remembers. What was said at the time, he does not. He says he's available to help Marie-Claude if she needs it. Je me suis rendu compte que j'avais des hommes en face de moi. Que je, en qui je ne pouvais pas avoir confiance. Puis je me suis surtout rendu compte que ma vie valait pas cher à leurs yeux. Je valais pas cher. Six years after the fishing trip, there's a lingering doubt in the mind of the little boy's mother. And what she sees on TV on the 28th of May 2002 does nothing to quell that doubt. Tonight on Dateline, They've taken on the most powerful force in their lives, their own church, exposing what they say is a terrible evil. Je m'aperçois que je suis pas la seule. Ça, ça, ça m'a secoué. Parce que moi, je pensais que j'étais un cas unique. Mais là, je vois qu'il y en a d'autres. Il y en a d'autres que moi. The very next morning, she asks her son, then 11 years old, if he remembers the fishing trip. He hasn't forgotten a thing. His mother records their exchange in her diary. Il m'a raconté en détail, comme si ça s'était produit la semaine passée, l'abus dont il fut victime. Il s'est fait tripoter par ce salaud à deux occasions sur le bateau, alors que les autres avaient le dos tourné et le regard en direction du rivage. Quand j'ai su les détails, je peux pas trouver les mots pour vous dire. Je peux pas. Parce que je suis devenue tellement enragée que je me suis dit « Hey, ça fait six ans que cette personne-là, elle, elle s'en est tirée. » Combien d'autres enfants ont été agressés depuis six ans? Mon mari est allé voir les anciens, puis les anciens lui ont dit « On va laisser ça entre les mains de Jéhovah, parce que Jéhovah va faire sortir le méchant. Ça va venir qu'à être connu. » Mais oui, par qui? Comment? The man who allegedly abused her son died recently, without ever having been investigated. She's left the Jehovah's Witnesses along with her daughter, but her husband and her son are still part of the church. It's to protect her boy that she wanted her identity concealed. Mon fils a suivi son père. On l'a conditionné comme on m'a conditionné. Et maintenant, comme moi, j'en fais plus partie, il a cessé d'avoir des contacts avec moi. Le problème, c'est pas les gens, c'est les politiques des témoins de Jéhovah. Ton enfant se fait agresser sexuellement, s'il n'y a pas de témoin, ça va rester là. Vous le savez pas. La police le sait pas, personne ne sait. It's an empire built on printing paper, today under threat by another type of paper, 
the thousands of files detailing sexual misconduct within the Jehovah's Witnesses. These people, their secrets, their secrets were terrible. The Watchtower Society in Brooklyn. Barbara Anderson spent 10 years here with her husband in the 1980s. She is one of the few women to get close to the seat of power in the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's such a wonderful life to me, and I'm so glad to be part of the Bethel family. A perfect mother and a model volunteer, Barbara Anderson quickly rose to become the Watchtower Society's head researcher. On October 8, 1991, when the Church's magazine publishes a shocking article on pedophilia, she's stunned by the feedback. It was a, an avalanche of information, and it never happened before, and we never dreamed there were so many. Hundreds of letters from victims flooded into headquarters, causing an uproar. So many of the abusers were elders. It isn't only here in the United States, because we were hearing from people across the seas. And so I thought and thought and thought, what can we do about this? What can we do about this to get the governing body to understand that this is a serious problem? The governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses, a group of seven older men thought to be the pipeline to God here on earth. Their orders are clear. He is going to be defeated. Word came from up uh, high through some members of the governing body to stop any interest in this subject. We're unable to help the victims. Every move she proposes is rejected flat out, one after the other, even the simplest one of all. You report it. Let the authorities handle it. It's so simple. And stop investigating. You've been saying that for 25 years. Has it changed at all? Absolutely not. They still investigate it. Finally, one day, Barbara has had it. She commits an unforgivable offense in prime time. It's because the Watchtower Society didn't want to acknowledge that these girls were telling the truth. Barbara and her husband, Joe, are expelled from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Her crime? Slandering the organization and the media. His? Not being able to control his wife. Their son hasn't spoken to them in 14 years. They don't even know their grandchildren. This is not revenge on a religion. It has nothing to do with this. This is a protection of a future generation of people. Her best weapon, documents that she's been able to unearth. Memos, secret instructions, and the infamous form, the child abuse telememo. She found it in court filings in California. I had no idea that they had a form made up. And that uh, tells me that uh, you must have an awful lot of cases if you have a form made up for it. Documents chronicling the misconduct of the faithful can be found in each Kingdom Hall. Here too, in the small town of McAllister in Oklahoma. These files are secret and impossible to obtain, sometimes even for police officers, armed with a warrant. Well, the detective, he decided to serve a search warrant on the Kingdom Hall because we told him, there's documents, they keep proof of these events. I know where the file cabinet is. He had me on the phone. He said, Debbie, this file cabinet's empty. And my heart came up into my throat. I felt physically sick. They left. There was nothing to get the documents are gone. The ones Debbie McDaniel was counting on to prove she's telling the truth. Where are we going now? Just about a block away is Ronnie's old house. The house where he had all the kids all the time. Ronnie is Ronnie Lawrence, the former leader of the Jehovah's Witnesses in McAllister. What happened in this house? He sexually abused not just me, but a number of children in the pool, in the bathtub, in the shed by the pool. The allegations are troubling. Between the ages of 7 and 13, Debbie says she was abused by Ronnie Lawrence, an elder who insisted on babysitting the children of his congregation. The worst of it was penetration with spoons that he kept in the bathroom. 
um, his fingers everywhere. That to me was the worst of it, feeling like I was helpless in the bathtub while he did that. As with so many other victims, she keeps her secret close. And again, like so many others, she's the one who will be expelled from the community by her alleged abuser for dating boys. Ten years later, Debbie's back in the fold, married and pregnant, when a woman contacts her. She came to me and had some questions, and she finally quit dancing around the subject and just said, did Ronnie molest you too? Another alleged victim, who had reported her own abuse to the elders without success four years earlier. She becomes the second witness that Debbie needs. Ronnie Lawrence will finally be excommunicated, thanks to the testimony of two women and one man. It was a complete wave of relief because for some reason I thought, this is great, I won't ever have to look at him. I can go to the Kingdom Hall and go out in service and never have to see him. But she did see him again, every week. That's because attending congregation meetings was one of the conditions he had to abide by to be accepted back into the community. He also had to apologize, which he did in this letter. Ronnie Lawrence is later allowed back into the congregation under certain conditions. He's banned from leading prayers and using a microphone. But oddly, none of the eight conditions forbids him from being around children. So Debbie decides to keep an eye on him. When I drove by a, an elementary school and I saw him picking up a girl that was new to the area. So I went to her and she was shocked. He had been picking her kids up, he'd been taking her kids for ice cream for months, and the local elders had said nothing. She had no clue that he had, was a proven, admitted child molester. With that warning call to the girl's mother, Debbie has broken a rule, the rule of silence, detailed in this confidential 1989 memo. None of the followers are meant to know why Ronnie Lawrence was excommunicated. I was called in and sat across the table again, and they were, they were shocked, or acted shocked and appalled, that I would take something so confidential and speak of it freely. But the elders know that other children had also spent time at Ronnie's house. Should we reach out to them? The elders ask headquarters. The Watchtower responds. But that doesn't stop others from coming forward, alleging abuse at the hands of Ronnie Lawrence. He's thrown out a second time, and then again reinstated five years later. One Sunday, after he's back from service, we approach him. Are you in contact with small children, sir? No. Do you still deny? Uh, having sexually abused uh, Debbie McDaniel and the others? No. You still do? Yes, ma'am. You did write letters, but you say that you didn't admit to sexually abusing children. I really never had anything to do with Debbie at all. You never touched her? Never. Never. If my dad pulls up, he would call the sheriff because we're unwelcome visitors. I don't ever want to go back in there again. So that's where you were disfellowshipped twice? Twice excommunicated, both times for immoral behavior, but a different kind of immorality. So what was the reason for your second ejection? Pornea. Again, but really it meant because you were gay, right? Right. You can be gay in the organization, you just can't have sex with anybody. She's married and a mother. Her homosexuality is a scandal. The Jehovah's Witnesses, who almost never report alleged pedophiles, don't hesitate to report Debbie to the authorities. They made a regular habit of calling um, the child protection and the police when they were in a pattern of trying to prove that I had lost my mind or I was mentally unstable. It's non-stop harassment, and Debbie ends up reporting it to the police. That's when officers hear Ronnie Lawrence's name for the first time. The police get a warrant to search the Kingdom Hall. If you remember, the filing cabinet was empty. But a couple of days went by and they got a phone call from a man that said serve it again. 
served the warrant again. He went back. He got all, he got everything. He called me and it was, it was victory. They got it. They got the documents. Debbie doesn't know who it was, but one of the congregation members put back all the files dealing with Ronnie Lawrence and sexual abuse. So longtime church leader McAllister sits behind bars, charged with sexually assaulting four people more than 30 years ago. Ronnie Lawrence is charged with sexually assaulting four children. A victory, aborted. The case never gets past a preliminary inquiry. Debbie is 20 years too late. The statute of limitations in Oklahoma has expired, and there's no chance for either a civil or criminal case against Ronnie Lawrence. However, how good is the Debbie McDaniel case? From a legal standpoint, in terms of strength, it is really, really good. We have testimony under oath, and we have documents showing the cover-up from headquarters. I mean, you just don't get this kind of evidence against a church, um, ever. Mark Edwards is Debbie's attorney. He also represents three other alleged victims of Ronnie Lawrence. All from the Jehovah's, all from this one church in this one small town. So you can imagine how many victims there are out there um, when you start adding together every small town. I mean, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. He wants justice for his client. To get it, he hopes to sue the Jehovah's Witnesses where they're headquartered, in New York State. Meanwhile, Debbie McDaniel is living with the consequences of her actions. Her parents don't speak to her anymore. She misses her mother terribly. Shunning is a gift that keeps on giving. You never get to wake up one day thinking that I can call my mom and you know she's not calling you. You know it's not gonna end. It's not going away. Twenty-four years after her last piano lesson, Eight years after her alleged abuser was thrown out, Mélanie Poirier finally walks through the doors of a police station. Au moment où j'ai euh, j'ai parlé à mes proches de ça, de ces abus-là, j'avais pas la force nécessaire. What drives her now is her anger. Her former piano teacher wasn't excommunicated for long. He rejoined the Jehovah's Witnesses without completing two key conditions confessing and asking forgiveness of his two alleged victims. Jamais avoué, jamais d'excuses. And he was reinstated. Oui, c'est une aberration. On s'est appelé tout de suite, quand on a appelé ça, on s'est appelé, puis euh, on était complètement catastrophé. Je pouvais pas croire que quelqu'un prenne un abuseur, un pédophile, un traître, puis qu'on lui dise maintenant, tu es un témoin de Jéhovah, puis tu peux prendre une Bible, puis tu peux aller cogner aux portes. Quelle aberration. Moi, c'est inacceptable. Inacceptable. He is knocking on doors on Saturday mornings, as we found out. He still denies assaulting Mélanie Poirier, and he refused to answer our questions. Because reporting sexual abuse within the Jehovah's Witnesses community is so rare, so are criminal convictions. We found two cases in Quebec. In one of those cases, Marcel Simonin, an elder from Châteauguay, was found guilty of sexually assaulting an 11-year-old girl. Simonin lost his place as an elder, but he was never expelled from the Jehovah's Witnesses, even with his criminal record. All around the world, the noose is tightening for Jehovah's Witnesses. Australia, is a case in point. What might be the worst cultural sexual abuse and cover-up within a church that we've ever seen. That church is the Jehovah's Witnesses. A royal commission finds 1,006 potential cases of sexual abuse detailed in files held by the Jehovah's Witnesses. How many were reported to the police? Not one was reported by the church to secular authorities. You heard right. Not one reported case out of 1,006. That left the Jehovah's Witnesses struggling to defend their actions. What ability have we got 
to protect every child in Australia. What you can do is you can report to uh, the child protection authorities. And that is done in some cases. But generally it's not done, is it? No. The Royal Commission recently published its report, the conclusion the Jehovah's Witnesses are failing to protect their own children and the children of others. Since the risk that those unpunished pedophiles who remain in the community will reoffend is so strong. But it's in California that the Jehovah's Witnesses have paid the highest price. What happened here is for the first time in the world, a jury found that Watchtower consciously disregarded the rights and safety of children. The instructions were you keep these pedophiles secret. Rick Simons and his client, Candace Conti, were the first to win a sexual abuse case against the Jehovah's Witnesses. At the age of nine, Candace was molested by this man who went preaching door to door with her. He was a pedophile and the elders knew it. This internal document is proof that the community was kept in the dark. What was the reason that the congregation was not notified? We don't make that public to the congregation. It's confidential. A little too confidential for the jury, which ruled the pedophile should have been monitored and the members warned. The price the Jehovah's Witnesses were ordered to pay? $28 million in damages that came with an implicit acknowledgement. That was part of a broader worldwide policy in every congregation in the world, in the United States, in North America, everywhere, to keep secret known child sexual abusers. The Jehovah's Witnesses are willing to pay big to keep that secret. $4,000 a day. That's the fine a judge has slapped on the Watchtower Society. $4,000 for each day the church refuses to hand over to the court their list of pedophiles. They've been compiling that list for at least 20 years. $4,000 a day is nothing to Jehovah's Witnesses. Watchtower is worth billions of dollars in real estate and uh, holdings. That list of pedophiles is at the heart of two lawsuits in California, and it could lead to dozens of other cases. As for Candace Conti and her $28 million in damages, it was whittled down to only $3 million. An appeals court ruled that the Jehovah's Witnesses were not obligated to warn their members about a confessed child molester in their community. Is it reasonable and feasible to ask Jehovah's Witnesses to warn every congregation about pedophiles? The Jehovah's Witnesses, unlike most religions, uh, do not mix with other groups. Your entire life is Jehovah's Witnesses. And so it is reasonable for them to warn the parents in the congregation so that they can protect their children and not allow these very clever and sophisticated serial child sexual abusers to get access to a victim. In Canada, there's been only one similar lawsuit against the Jehovah's Witnesses. A court awarded former member Vicky Bohr $5,000 for psychological damages. The Jehovah's Witnesses might be feeling the heat. They're starting to change the instructions they're handing down. Parents will now sometimes be warned of a sexual predator in the community, if he's considered dangerous. And since August 1st, a victim no longer has to confront his or her abuser face to face. C'est un show de boucan en bon québécois. C'est une image qui se donne. La chose la plus importante pour cette corporation là, c'est leur image. We contacted the Jehovah's Witnesses Canadian headquarters outside of Toronto. They refused to answer our questions. Instead, they directed us to their website. With the policies that they have in place, where a kid can't come to you and say, I've been molested, with those policies, they have become a dangerous place to be in general. C'est la parfaite place pour un, un pédophile pour se cacher. J'ai peur de dire ce, ce mot-là, mais euh, ça peut être un paradis de pédophile. C'est la facilité. Ce sont eux, ces traîtres-là, ce sont eux, ces abusseurs-là, qui ont sali l'organisation par leurs actions. 
ce sont eux qui le font. Moi, je le dis, là, s'il y a des gens qui ont été abusés, c'est pas de saler l'organisation que de parler. Ces gens-là la nettoient. Ils enlèvent dans leur sein des personnes qui sont des traîtres, des abuseurs, des criminels.